In October of 2018, I was at the United States Olympic Training Center and I was in my dorm and I was having a hard time just getting around and I couldn't see small fonts and stuff like that, but I never really had a problem like, wait, where's the bed? Where's the door? And that started happening to me and I was like, this can't be real. I kind of went into panic mode. Then I called my mom and I'm like, mom, you have to come get me. And I remember just being completely terrified of what was going on and how this was happening. I went through a very dark time and a very bad depression. I didn't want to eat. I didn't want to do anything. I just pretty much sat in my room. And my parents got me the help that I needed. And then I found an amazing coach, Mark Dannon, who helped me through it and showed me what I can do and how I can get the love back for the sport that I had. I got a phone call from another coach saying that they recommended me to somebody whose daughter was visually disabled and would you be interested? And I said, I wouldn't be opposed, I just need to talk to them. I knew that I had to set something up that was a safe environment for her and I have seen um, visually impaired swimmers before and I've been coaching for 25 years and I know it's mostly about just safety and I still have to give her the work. I wanted to show people, oh, look at me. I can be an elite athlete, and I could swim, and I could do all of this, and I'm blind. When I got her, I noticed that however she was visually impaired, she still had a beautiful stroke and great technique and beautiful underwaters. So the challenge for me was just to get her comfortable, but I see her, if she sticks with it and continues to work hard, definitely going to Tokyo and probably winning the gold. You're so mean. You can be something even if you are blind. Even if you have a disability, you can still do something with your life. And I feel like the outside world really puts blind people in a box that you have to like have your sunglasses on and you can't wear makeup and you can't do your hair. And I just wanted to show people that that's not how it is and that I can do my makeup and I can do my hair and I can dress nice and I can have this adorable little guy dog with me <laughs> and that I can go out and that I can conquer the world. I met him about a year ago and I was like, man, this is the cutest little puppy ever. I can't believe that he's mine now. <laughs> Our trainer's done an incredible job of teaching him the skills that he needs to be a very effective guide dog. He's going to be a great, great partner for Anastasia as they go forward. I'm happy that she has a guide dog uh, because I think it will make her a little bit more independent and Radar is an excellent guide dog, uh, so he's going to make her life easier, so that's good. I mean, you know, I love dogs. Uh, I just can't obviously take that one, but it's fine. <laughs> Two years ago, when we first embarked on this partnership with the Islanders, you never know how this is going to end, but I cannot imagine you know, this story having a better ending than we have right here, right now. I just feel so lucky to have him in my life and to take care of me and that I can be independent, and now that I have him, I feel that. I feel like I'm going to conquer the world with him. <laughs> ah!